parents, family, and friends. Uh, cheerleaders look like they're very emotional and excited and nervous at the same time. I'm really looking forward to a, There's a, to a great of, event. A lot of girls down there. We've got 25 squads from three different divisions from all over Europe. So, I mean, there's quite a bit of emotion going on, I imagine, especially with the parents being here. I mean, being a teenage girl and boy, because we've got quite a few co-ed uh, teams out here. I mean. Yeah, when I arrived today, uh, it was really interesting to see uh, the amount of males and, and females uh, that are participating. Uh, it really appears to me males are, are really getting introduced into the sport, and it's really a uh, uh, feeling the completeness of the team. Well, you know, yourself, I mean, I me mean included, I'm, as a male cheerleader, from you cheering internationally from teams from the States at a college level to all-star level to doing open squads here in Europe. I mean, what what kind of, you know, stuff do you have to do as a guy to go into to cheer? Like, what, are, what are the challenges that you face, would you say, like, some of these young guys growing up right now? Oh, man. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I never even thought cheerleading existed for the for males in, in high school. I uh, attended college, and, and that's where I got introduced to it. And I found out that it is a very physical sport for, for the males. Uh, the males really have to do their diligence in getting in the weight room, getting their strength up. Uh, you got to get your speed, flexibility. Th these are things that guys don't really uh, think about developing at a young age. Um, uh, injuries are another thing. Uh, guys are, are very successful at injuries when you're throwing girls, you know, 10, 15 feet in the air, and, and it's a lot, a lot of pain and stress on your back. Absolutely, completely agree with that. And we got some some strong-looking guys out there too, and at such a at a, a young level, I want to say, because high school, you know, usually it's when guys start to pick up on cheerleading because you know they take the interest and they they understand that it's the options out there. So. For guys that come in at this level, I mean, yesterday walking, watching some of the routines, I mean, I got we got one guy throwing a toss lip, throwing, doing QPs. I mean, that's that's pretty substantial, oh, I think, especially one of these smaller schools. Yeah, it's amazing to see how, how the young men of this age are, are developing faster than, than during the times that I cheerlead. Guys are getting more physical. They're, they're, they're learning stuff at a younger age. They're getting their flexibility. They're getting their strength in. They're hitting the weight room, uh, facilities. Especially here in Europe, I'm noticing, you know, military bases, they got a lot of access to weight rooms, and, and every day you see more and more of these young men in there and working hard and, and putting their time in, you know, and they also have to juggle this with, with their, their sports, football, basketball, wrestling, and then they do cheerleading on the side. And they, they start at a young age, and they they develop this this great, you know, love for it, and they find out cheerleading's very challenging. You know, how do you feel about when people say that cheerleading's not a sport? I mean. That kind of just irks me, you know, because there's so much physical activity, like you were saying, that goes into cheering that people, I think they just, when they, when they think about cheer, they just assume that, you know, it's just a guy on the floor with a megaphone screaming at the top of his lungs, doing some sharp motions, but there's... Like I you absolutely agree with you, Dan. There, there's, there's been a very bad... Um, uh, reputation for cheerleading as being, you know, more spirited, more, more yelling, more crowd pleasing, you know. But these days, you know, with injuries, with, uh, with, with training, with, uh, with, uh, with the uh, choreograph, it, it's becoming more and more sports. And we're hoping one of these days, you know, it might be introduced into the Olympics. You know, rumor has it, you know, this might be uh, the, the sport to develop in the future. Absolutely. Well. Here first we got coming up is going to be Sigonella in Division 3. So this is going to be the first squad of the 25 for today coming up here in just a minute. You can just see they looked pretty good yesterday. So let's see if they can. Really it's all about the competition. It's the stick and the stunts that you got to do. Keeping it clean. That's the way you're going to be successful today. Yeah, it looks like they're ready to go. Um, they're, uh, you can tell how focused they look. Yeah. The emotional buildup right now being the first squad to come out is probably just... Oh, you you know, they're, they're nervous as all get out right now. But you know what, when they're working under pressure, it's the oh. time to shine. Oh, being the first squad, that's the way to approach the mat right there. Come out, give it all you got. Let's see what they got. Nice sharp motions. Yep. Good use of the ripple. For these smaller squads, and having the ripple really makes it seem like there's, a, there's more people out there. There's more to look at, so there's something going on. Absolutely. It's a way to get them to look, look at a bigger squad than what they are. 
especially, and there is a challenge with this, with, with a smaller squad. You've really got to make sure you're in sync, you've got your motions clean, because any, any one person that's off will be noticeable to all these judges and, and to the crowd. Absolutely. They, they seem to have a bigger challenge than these larger squads. Yep. The basket tosses. Looking pretty good out there. Pair of lips, a little, little bobble. Good. Looking good out there. Good way to open up today's competition. Extension pyramid and elevators. Good pyramid for an all girl squad. Yes, it is. That's another challenge of one of the, the smaller squads. You know, to, to be able to build the big pyramids takes takes a lot less people and, and it becomes a lot lot bigger challenge for these smaller schools. Absolutely. You need dance formation. You don't see a lot of straight line dance formations in showing it, but they're playing into it really well. Good transition. I like how they uh, they start off top, start off tight and then they, yep. they move into a nice spread out formation. Good Good transition. Right? Nice selection of music as well. Uh -huh. Your favorite songs, I believe. Nice finish. Good finish. Uh, that's the way to start off a good competition, like. Like today's. Thank you. Yeah, they did a really good job. Uh, what I like about uh, cheerleading competitions is when, when squads go out, you get a lot of participation from, from other cheer squads. It seems like when everybody comes together as a family and they really, they really fight for each other. Exactly. There, there's, there's a lot of competition, but it's also a lot of encouragement from everybody. Oh, absolutely. Especially when the cheer's going on. It's almost like a little battle between the squad on the floor and all the girls on the all the girls watching, it really makes it more interesting. Okay. Yeah, in just a second, we're going to have an interview on the ground with Abby with an update. What's going on down the floor? Abby? I'm Abby and I'm here with Soleil, a junior over there at Siganella. Tell me how you guys think you did. I think we did really good. We worked really hard to um, come here and do what we need to do and I think we established that. Now you guys brought a really big uh, support system over here cheering for you. How does that make you feel? It feels really good that our team supports us because we're there for them every time, every game. So it's nice that they were here for us. All right. Well, thank you and good luck. Thank and you. back to you guys in the booth. <laughs> 